This is Lenny Sanicola for World at Work TV. Today's topic is prescription drug management. Most employers offer prescription drug coverage as part of their medical plan. In recent years, prescription drug costs have actually represented a shrinking share of total health spending. This has been due to an influx of generic drugs into the marketplace, patent expirations of brand name drugs, lower drug prices for generic drugs, and lower overall medical trend. However, prescription drug costs are expected to spike again. This is due to the emergence of new brand name drugs into the marketplace, higher generic and brand name drug prices, and the lack of patent expirations. Regardless of whether you're using a pharmacy benefit manager as a service partner to manage and administer your prescription drug program, there are several things that employers can use to manage their prescription drug costs. These include the following. The first one is cost sharing techniques. Employers can implement a change from copay to coinsurance and or a deductible for prescription drugs, thereby allowing the consumer to be better in touch with true prescription costs. Coinsurance remains popular because it allows employers to share costs consistently with employees, even when drug prices fluctuate. It also creates a greater degree of pricing transparency in that employees are more aware of the actual cost of the drugs they use. The second item would be the use of several tiers in pricing. This approach attempts to shift costs to the consumer and steer them towards generic and preferred brand drugs. A tier one would include generic substitutions. These drugs are biomedically equivalent for drugs that are no longer protected by patent. They cost significantly less than brand drugs, and their use is often influenced by plan design. Employees typically pay the lowest copay. In tier two, formulary or brand name preferred drugs are used. These drugs are still protected by a patent, but are on a pre-approved list that is often negotiated on a discount. In tier three, non-formulary or brand name drugs are used. These drugs are protected by patent. Although available, there is no discount negotiated. The plan typically charges the highest copay or coinsurance for this tier. More employers have actually implemented four and even five tier structures, the highest tier being for so-called lifestyle drugs, and some have even instituted another tier for higher cost specialty drugs. Another cost management technique is dispensing medications to encourage the use of generics. In addition to using tiers of drugs, the plan can also be designed so that regardless of the way the doctor writes the prescription, the pharmacy is instructed to dispense as follows. Dispense as written, one. Pharmacy fills at the generic level, if there is one, even if the doctor requests a brand name. Dispense as written, two. Pharmacy fills as written, but the consumer then has to pay the difference in cost between the brand cost and the generic cost, plus has to pay the generic copay. Step therapy is another technique. Somewhat similar to dispensing medications as described above, a plan can be designed so that when a prescription is written for a brand name drug, the pharmacy is instructed to start the consumer off with the generic equivalent and the consumer is given a certain amount of time to try it. If, after a specified time, it doesn't work for the consumer, the pharmacy can step up to the next formulary level and try again. Uptiering. This happens throughout the year when the formulary changes and some drugs are put in a higher tier, usually costing more. Some may go down in cost as well. The use of mail order drugs. Mail order ex remains extremely popular. A mail order plan is effective for dispensing maintenance medications, usually a 90-day supply at a reduced rate. In many plans, individuals are encouraged, either through financial incentives or penalties, to use mail order through a reduced copayment. A small number penalize employees who don't use mail order plans for maintenance drugs. Some plans may even require an additional copayment from members who continue to use retail pharmacies after a specified number of refills. Some employers, although not many, 
may not reimburse for maintenance drugs at all that are purchased at a retail level. Waiving co-payments for chronic conditions has yet to enjoy widespread use, but is increasing in popularity. The purpose of this is to make sure that people adhere to their medication regimen. Another tip to manage prescription drug prices is to seek full fiduciary management of the PBM contract if you are using a pharmacy benefit manager. What this basically means is the PBM accepts fiduciary responsibility and you have true transparency when it comes to the average wholesale price of drugs. You are then guaranteed to get that price every time. Costly specialty drugs are a primary driver of increased prescription drug costs today and expected to be so in the future. Specialty drugs are drugs that help in the management of costly, chronic, complex, and rare health conditions such as cancers and hepatitis C. In many cases, employers and plan sponsors have decided it's best to negotiate with a specialty vendor who specializes in the dispensement of specialty drugs. This network within a network can often lower costs by choosing only one pharmacy to dispense these types of specialty drugs, thereby getting cost efficiencies. There are other cost sharing techniques that employers can explore as well. One thing that employers should consider that's going on in the landscape is industry consolidation. There has been a lot of payers that have been consolidating, whether it be retail pharmacies, PBMs, clinics, other providers. This may or may not be a good thing for either employers or consumers. Industry experts expect the amalgamation of these providers to continue into the near future. This could have a negative impact on both the pricing of drugs and the availability of drugs in the marketplace. Employers have a significant role as a stakeholder to influence drug prices. Employers should encourage employee drug compliance through educational programs and it also encourages the use of generic drugs by their employees. In addition, employers should take the following steps. They should be much more aggressive in getting their pharmacy benefit managers and payers to take more risk in the drug pricing game. They should provide financial incentives for specific drug therapies in order to encourage medication compliance. They should improve the oversight and management of specialty drugs. They should implement patient medication therapy adherence and compliance programs. And finally, they should explore the feasibility of an on-site or near-site pharmacy for their employees. For World of Work TV, this is Lenny Sanicola.